Here are the words of a former high-level Satanist high priestess over Indiana for 17 years, who was also a former CIA assassin. Her name was Elaine Notes. She said, quote, I would get so angry, now this is a former high, Satanic high priestess over Indiana for 17 years, and CIA assassin. She said, I would get so angry when Christians would come up to me after my lectures on Satanism and say, well, because I'm a Christian, I cannot be touched by Satanists. Wrong. Satan had given us a mandate to sacrifice Christians, and we obliged him. We targeted them. We stalked them. We abducted them, and they were abducted and sacrificed and killed like all the rest. Except, now take heart in this, Christian, except that, in many cases, just as we would be bringing forth some of these Christians to be tortured and sacrificed, a bright light would appear over them, and they would start to shout, Jesus, you've come for me. And just like that, their souls would be gone, and we were left with a dead, smiling corpse. (laughs) Praise the Lord. (laughs) I mean, obviously you don't want to get to that point if if it can all be avoided, but I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. I mean, that's awesome. So our night of fun would then be ruined. And I would go home cursing and saying, What is this with so many of these Christians? Before we can kill them, they are gone. And with a smile. End of quote. I tell you, nothing convinced me that Jesus was greater than Satan than when these things would happen during our rituals. Now, think about it. As a direct result of her seeing this happen in satanic rituals, meaning right before they were were getting ready to sacrifice them, a bright light would appear over them and they would start to shout, Jesus, you've come for me. And then they would die smiling. I mean, you got to admit, that's pretty amazing. And I mean, when you have a Satanist seeing this over and over and over again, she finally realized you had the real power. And she came out of it, and now she actually exposes it. So, praise the Lord. Elaine admitted that this was not always the case, however, and some died in great agony. I want to point out that Christians die in car accidents. They die of cancer. They die of gunshot wounds. Because... Being a Christian does not make anyone immune automatically to such attacks, nor does it make them immune to persecution or martyrdom. Therefore, precautions should be taken to help prevent satanic attacks and the abduction of family members and loved ones. I am sharing the accounts to wake up my fellow Americans to the reality of attacks of this nature, and I will follow it with special precautions to be taken to avoid becoming just one more victim on American soil. Satan is the author of death. Jesus Christ declared, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. The following accounts come out of the mountains of North Carolina. As they stretch into Tennessee, they come from a a now Christian source undergoing professional counseling after coming out of years of Satanism. uh, Having been born into a Satanic family and dedicated to Satan from her mother's womb. This happens all the time. Remember, people that are born up Satanists or Luciferians are dedicated to Satan from their mother's womb. I have spent hours personally interviewing Paula, working with her professional counselor for many years and exposing Satanism in this region. Uh, Many of her accounts have been further confirmed through other former Satanists in this region. Now, this is, I live in the foothills, kind of, of the mountains of North Carolina. I don't live exactly where they're talking about, but I do live near there. And I have heard a lot about a lot of satanic stuff that goes on where they're talking about, and particularly even in this area, like during Halloween, I've, I've, I've um, heard there's some um, definitely a lot of high-level occultists that, that live um, in you know the mountains of North Carolina. There's no doubt about it. And so I've already taken, well, we had that one trip where Taylor and I went to... Um, prayer over this place called the dragon this place where all these motorcycles go to to ride their bikes i heard that there were satanic altars in there and we oh we spent several days going through there and then another place in tennessee called the devil's triangle driving that uh, praying over the dragon praying over that town it's called robbinsville and every other occult place i could find i mean I, i i tried to go everywhere i could possibly go um also we hunted down where those people called the star doves are and that particular one mountain that they that they say we went to we went got as close to the mountain as we could we prayed we we've we've tried to do some stuff my my problem is is that um it's like I either do that or I do this <laughs> this ministry so I can't really do both and it's tough to make those types of trips when 
you've got emails pouring in and, and you've got another study you got to prepare for and then you got to answer all the emails that are coming. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's just so much one person or even one little family can do. But, um, yeah, I've heard, I've heard a lot about this, but I wasn't aware it was this bad. Um, many of, uh, this goes on to say, many of her accounts have been further confirmed through other former Satanists in that region. Quote, I would often travel with my father. Now, this is from the Satanist that was dedicated to Satan from her mother's womb. I would often travel with my father when he was sent out to abduct people for sacrifice, human sacrifice, okay? This is what they did. I was placed in the front passenger seat of a satan of the Satanist van to make my father appear innocent. You have to understand, they're always going to try to get you to lower your guard. I He was carrying... Uh, to make my father appear innocent like he was carrying this child with him. But it was just a, de- a deceptive front. And behind us, concealed inside of the back of the van, were two men with knockout drugs and duct tape. The windows were blocked out and a blanket put behind either behind the driver and the passenger seats up front so that no one could see them. This is typical for satanic ad- abduction vans and teams. They go out in teams and they do this stuff. Now... Before you say, oh, this couldn't happen to be reported in the news all the time. No. Wait until I get to the, the, to the statistics on the real statistics for missing people in America. And then you'll see this is very easy to happen and it happens all the time. And most likely our government's in collusion with it because many of the high-level people in the government do this very thing and condone this very thing. So, beware when you see such suspicious vans prowling dark streets, blackened windows, especially out late at night. There was this one woman these Satanists especially hated and were stalking. She was in her early 20s, pretty, and known as a strong Christian. We knew she was joining in prayer meetings against the Satanists here, so we were stalking her for human sacrifice. One evening, just as it was getting dark, we spotted her walking home along a deserted country road. And I'm like, I, I'm like, you know how you hit your head? It's like, oh my word, what were you thinking walking home on a deserted country road? You know, I mean... <sighs> I'm not saying God can't protect you, but, you know, golly, she's a pretty woman in her 20s, and and she's walking on a deserted country road at night? Oh, my word. Oh, Anyway, our van pulled up, the men jumped out, they grabbed her, duct taped her hands, feet together, shut her mouth, injected her with a knockout drug. She lay silent as we drove her to the caves where our rituals took place. The location is beyond Murphy, North Carolina. I think that's one of the places we might have drove through, I don't know. As you drive through Tennessee, when she came out of the influence of the drugs, she was naked and chained to our altar. The Satanists then told her they wanted her to be recruited into Satanism and to work undercover for them, to infiltrate churches and to spy on Christians for them and to help recruit others. Because see, this is what they do. This is what they do. But if she would not recruit into Satanism, she would be sacrificed. All she would say is, I am a Christian, I cannot deny Jesus Christ. End of quote. Uh, my, the first thing that comes into my head is where it talks about in Hebrews, I think it was like 11, where it talks about like the Hall of Fame of Faith, and then it says at the end where it says, of whom the world was not worthy. All these different people they list. And that's what I think about when I see that. Of whom the world was not worthy. She, all she would say is, I am a Christian, I cannot deny Jesus Christ. And when they saw she would not cooperate, they began to torture and sacrifice her. Uh, I watched as they did various things to torment her, finally driving a spike through her head from ear to ear. And when she continued to groan, they took a high caliber handgun, inserted it into her private parts, and pulled the trigger. Because she was laying down on a satanic altar. The bullet exited through her head, and by then she was gone. But never once did she deny Jesus Christ. Well, you know, that's the thing. Would you be willing to go through all that and not deny Jesus? I mean, obviously you can't do that apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no way. But you don't know. You don't know what God may call upon you to do. I I mean, some of this, it's it's like, I'm I'm, I'm like, oh, why was she walking on a deserted road at night? You know what I mean? I, uh, I think it could have been avoided in other words. You know, but it wasn't God's will, I guess, you know. It's just tragically, unbelievably, horrifically sad, you know. But it was a witness to all those Satanists. They all saw it. And hopefully, 
there were people that were converted as a result of, of this unbelievable show of faith and strength through the Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't want to minimize it. I'm just saying, I, you, you can't help but not want that for her. You know what I mean? It's another Christian sister. You don't want that for her. So anyway, um, I am sparing the American people no details, however graphic. Why? Because of the intense apathy and ignorant, ignorance that Americans, America's Satanism thrives and operates under. Meaning that this cloak of darkness that it operates under and this cloak of, oh no, that can't really exist, is the very thing that Satan wants. So when you expose and reprove the unfruitful works of darkness and shed light on it, you know, that's a big part of actually defeating it or coming against it. Because if nobody knows about it, there's no prayer going up regarding it to stop it. Your ignorance is their cloak of darkness under which they must operate. Again, 2 Corinthians 2.11 lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We've already went over some of his devices with the whole description of how they operate through the, these vans and having little kids up front. and you know, Such atrocities multiplying throughout the nation. It is time the veil be lifted. It is my intent to use these true accounts to melt in different hearts in this nation and to wake up America, especially Christians. Paula also admitted, quote, at one time our satanic coven kidnapped the pastor. He was brought to our cave and stripped and nailed to a cross. He kept pleading with us to repent and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and when they got tired of hearing that, they slashed his throat and finished sacrificing him. Even little children are not spared. Our coven often sacrificed children. And you're going to understand when I get into these statistics on missing, missing people in America how this could be so prevalent. Satanists believe that the smaller, more innocent, and perfect the victim is, the more power Satan will give them through sacrifice. That's what Aleister Crowley taught. Some of our members were doctors. We had shock treatment equipment in our cave. Children were chained to altars, electrodes placed on their bodies. They were shocked into spasms and seizures. Their private body organs were often ripped off and thrown to the dogs in the caves. They were raped, tortured, and killed, admitted Paula, through tears. Now again, should we not tell their story? Should we just act as though it doesn't exist and not? I think their story deserves to be told. And that's why I'm getting into this stuff. And then she says, I will never forget one little girl. They used a power saw to begin to dis dismember her. Starting at, oh gosh, this is horrific. Starting at her feet, I will never forget her screaming as they slowly began to cut her apart. The screaming only stopped when they finally reached her stomach and she was gone. There were always video cameras mounted on the walls so that each sacrifice could be turned into another money-making pornographic snuff film. That's what these maggots do. They film this stuff. It, it, it always ends up boiling back to money half the time. Well, the love of money is the root of all evil. Can you imagine wanting to see something like that? And getting some type of sick sexual gratification from that? You talk about having your conscience seared with a hot iron. You talk about having a soul so black... That it, black wouldn't even describe it. It's so black. Truly, it had been better for that man that he had never been born. That a millstone be hung. Oh gosh, I can't. I mean, this is just horrific. A oh, millstone hung about his neck, and he'd be cast in the midst of the sea. That is your lot. That is the lot of those devils that do this. May God rain down His holy fury on these devils and that they be thrust down to hell this day that all men would see and fear and declare the work of God that they would wisely consider of his doing and the righteous would be glad in the Lord and trust in him and all the upright heart would glory these people have forfeited their right to live I'm not saying we go out and kill them I'm saying that we need to be praying about it and let God do that work. Let God rain down his fury on this black wickedness. 
that he would defend these, you know, through prayer, defend these little children. But this is going on all the time. And when and when you see the, st- the statistics I'm going to get into, you're going to understand how this is so possible. And remember, Satan always does this stuff under the cloak of darkness. So just because you're not hearing about it, you have to understand, that the, the mainstream media is totally controlled by these very people that do this stuff. The most wicked people in the world are the ones at the top. The 13 families of the Illuminati, many of these judges and, and the doctors and, and the people in high political offices and the senators and the governors and the con- these are, are some of the people, many of the people that do this. So they're going to protect their own and they're in a position to protect their own. That's why Satan put them there so that he could keep this cloak of darkness over this. And we would never know about it. To never even pray. They even abducted pregnant women. I would watch as these women would plead for their lives of their unborn children. The unborn would be cut out of the mother's body and then sacrificed. Then they would sacrifice the mother. Or often we would throw babies alive into vats of battery acid. Yes, I've watched many victims as they took their final breath. Again, does their story does their story deserve being told? Or should I just say nothing about it? One friend of mine, Kathy Carey, now a Christian undergoing extensive counseling, was sold into Satanism and the COVID in her area at the age of two. Her parents needed the the money. Whatever. Parents needed the money. Give me a break. I spent much time with her, interviewing her in the Cleveland, Ohio area and also at a Christian retreat. She was personally being trained under the infamous Norma Fitzwater, brutal high priestess of Cleveland and the entire Ohio Satanist region for over 25 years. Fitzwater's name and rank were personally confirmed to me by numerous former Satanists, including my CIA source. Because they work with the CIA. I mean, these people are part of the government. Just so you know, it's all interlinked. Not saying everybody in the government, but it's part I have personally gone on the radio broadcast of Pastor Ernie Sanders of Cleveland, Ohio to expose the vicious Satanists um, for an entire week. I think he was on my email list for a long time. He might still be. She shared the following. I only had a week to enjoy my newborn. Baby Becky before she was brutally sacrificed. During the ritual, I was forced to the front of the altar. My clothes were torn off, screaming. I was fastened to the altar as my baby was seized. I was laid, they laid the baby on my naked stomach and began to sacrifice her. Then the next part is even too horrific for me to even get into. I just took that out. She was essentially cannibalized. When, and again, isn't that funny? They cannibalized her and all the stuff we're talking about today on the cannibalization, these people eating body parts. Do you see how society's degrading? And, and where does it end up? It always end up in, it always ends up in human sacrifice and eating one another in, in eating human blood, which is forbidden in the Bible. When the ritual was finished, I was released, and the remains of baby Becky were handed to me in a bloody blanket. I don't know how I'm not crying. I, I think it's the Holy Spirit's helping me not to just totally go nuts. She led me over to a window in her home. She said, see those wild daisies in the corner of the yard? She said, that's the remains of where baby Becky are buried under. She says, my fellow Americans, multiply this wicked assault on little children of America by the Satanists thousands of times over. And you will begin to have some idea of the extent to which our nation is stained with the blood of the innocents. That's not even counting the abortions. The 60 or 70 million abortions even on record. What about the are you after the morning after pill? Those are abortions. The abortions from the pill, the patch, the, the, those methods, they, they can be abortifactive as well. You see why God's judgment has to... <laughs> We're not going to have massive corporate repentance on, on a national scale like they had in Nineveh. We're not going to have that. The churches are telling everybody it's all great. Most of them. 
They're not getting, even if they're not, they're not getting into these types of, of issues. There's no prayer going up, or very little, about these issues. So wickedness continues to fester and grow. We, in this country, America, is so richly deserving of judgment. There's, there's no doubt. I, I deserve it. I deserve judgment. I'd be the first to admit it. I haven't done enough. I would be the first to point my finger at myself. If I could, if I could stand with God outside of my body and, 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 and point fingers at myself and condemn myself, I would be the first one to do it. I would. I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I know you can say you can say that and really not me. I'm serious. I could, how could, how could I, I possibly stand before God and say I'm so righteous or I'm so whatever. I'm not. I haven't done enough. If he threw me into hell, I could offer no other than other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Other than being saved to the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood. That's the only thing I could ever point to. Because my own righteousness is, is, is a filthy rag, according to Isaiah 64. I haven't done enough. Who, who, who could I... <laughs> I see this and it's like you realize how far you've fallen short. And then it ends by saying that our prayers can make a difference. Uh, it was written by Pamela Ray Schufert. Anyway, um, let's go to the next article. Actually, you know what? I'm probably going to have to... Let me let me just say this, because it's just it's short, and then I'm going to get into the next one. 2,300 Americans missing every day. This is according to the FBI. This is what they're admitting to. FBI reports of missing persons have increased six-fold in the last 25 years. From roughly 150,000 in 1980 to 900,000 this year. I think that was 2011 when the report was written. 150,000 to 900,000? Why is it? You, you See, here's what gets you. One little girl, one little boy goes missing. It's all over the news, all over America. And you think they're doing that same thing for all the, the children, and they're not. They're not. Those are poster children. Put out there for your benefit so you'll think that there's nobody going missing. An astounding 2,300 Americans are reported missing every day, including both adults and children. According to FBI statistics, who knows? It might be double that. I don't know. I haven't even got into what they could be doing in underground bases. We talk about the satanic aspect. But the underground bases are a whole other different deal. The deep underground military bases, they're called dumbs. They're all interconnected with... with, with um, underground railways... That's a fact. From what I've heard that goes in there, it's, it's, it's even more horrific than what I just described. I spent some time with a lieutenant colonel who I think now is dead in the mountains of North Carolina before I even moved up here. And he told me he's witnessed stuff go on. Sacrificing of children underground in these underground bases. It's horrific. Unbelievable. It's, it's, it's indescribable. He said the people that, um, I think it was Operation Archangel or something he's talked about, the people that, that our government had literally um, helped to create the, the kiddie porn industry the, and the child snuff industry. Now, I did a whole teaching on this on, um, I don't know, pedophilia. It's like nine parts or something. It was, it was horrific. It was about as bad as this. And, and um, he said that the, the guys that he knew that went into that, 
It's like our government creates something, or let's say the world government, the Illuminati, they'll create something, and then they'll supposedly create the solution for it. So they actually had people within our government that were going in there trying to infiltrate it and to try to supposedly bring it down, even though they created it in the first place. I know that sounds weird, but, you know, it's the whole Hegelian dialectic synthesis, you know, thesis, synthesis, I don't know, antithesis, thesis, and synthesis. Anyway, they, they said that... um. He said that the people that he knew, the guys that were in the military that were assigned to infiltrate this thing was like Operation Archangel or something. I could never find anything about it on the internet, but he said that um, those guys that would get into that, they all killed themselves. Because in order to infiltrate it, you had to actually go and um, act like you were uh, into that stuff, into kitty porn and, and child snuff films and, and you had to do things that you would normally never ever do in order to infiltrate and he said he said I think he said every single one he ever knew killed themselves just from actually what they saw was going on he said there was a gigantic base of this that went on in Japan now I don't know if that had to do anything with, with this all the stuff we've seen happen with Japan lately but if that was going on there in Japan where they had like this was like the cent- central hub for this stuff to go on I don't know. It would make sense that God's judgment would fall upon that land. I don't know. I can't say that for sure, but... I mean... You can't believe what's being done behind closed doors, in caves, in castles, in underground bases, to little children. You can't even comprehend. I can't comprehend the level of wickedness and the magnitude of evil. And this is one of the main things they desire is to, is to kill and destroy and vampirize innocence. They believe it increases their powers. And Satan wants it. Because we're created in his image, in God's image, and he wants to kill and destroy and defile anything good and innocent and little. And I, I just it's it's incomprehensible. I don't like to do these studies. But 2,300 people are reported missing every day in America, according to FBI statistics. But only a tiny fraction of those are stereotypical abductions or kidnappings by a stranger. For example, the federal government counted 840,279 missing person cases in 2001. All, all, but 50,000 were juveniles. All but 50,000 were juveniles? That means they're almost all children. Classified as anyone younger than 18. Children are the most preferable sacrifice for the Satanists, the Luciferians, the pagans whatever sicko cult group you might be in reference to, they band together. Remember how I did that teaching recently on like the pedophiles and the pedo bear and all that stuff and how they have all these ways of communicating with one another? And that's just with their, their, their own little sick pedophile networks. You can imagine what kind of network they might have on a global scale. Breeders. I mean, they're, they're called satanic breeders. These women that are impregnated for the sole purpose of when they deliver their baby to sacrifice it. Like I said, that's the whole thing with Ishtar, Easter. The how it all got started was was that they would actually get impregnated on a satanic altar at Easter, and then twelve months later, after the baby had been born for three months, they would sa- reset. They would sacrifice the baby on the very same altar where the woman was impregnated. That's part of the wonderful Ishtar Easter celebration with the bunny rabbits. Why? Because it's fertility. So they would sacrifice the baby as a fertility ritual. How sick is that? It's where we get the word Easter from. It's Ishtar, the goddess Ishtar. And all of all the fertility things surrounding with it. The egg, symbol fertility. The rabbit, the fastest procreating mammal on the planet. The rabbit. That's why we get all this. It has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're the whole teaching on it. Just key in Easter in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. But 
That's the most important thing as to bringing this all home is understanding how many people turn up missing every year. And these are just what they'll admit to. 900,000 people a year? That's a lot of people. Now, granted, I'm sure not all of them, obviously not all of them, are being sacrificed, but a whole bunch of them are. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this part here. I'll see if I can finish the next part um, in the time a lot. I only have 51 minutes left till this is over. So um, we'll see you in part four.